Hey everyone, this is You'll Be Blessed here, and I am here to make it clear and make it plain to you the concept of understanding periodic trends. And this periodic trend that we're going to look at is called ionization energy. So you're going to be able to describe the trends in ionization energy in order to discuss the effects of the subatomic particles on the chemical properties of atoms. So let us begin. Ionization energy. First, you need to know that ionization energy is the re energy required to remove an electron from an atom or an ion. And so normally you start with a neutral atom where the number of protons and the, and the electrons are the same. And then you add enough energy to the atom to the point where the electrons absorb this energy. And one of the electrons or more electrons will actually jump off of the atom, never to return again. And so you ionize it and you create what's called an ion and the electron separates. And you should notice that the ion when you take off an electron from a neutral atom, the ion will have a positive charge and then the electron is, is disappeared. OK, so now you've disturbed the balance of protons and electrons in that atom, causing it to become an ion. OK, and then here's just a picture representation. As you can see, the um, we have a lithium atom here. If you were to try to take an electron completely off the lithium atom, you would actually cause the atom to get smaller and lose one of its energy levels, or there would not be an electron on its last energy level anymore. And therefore, that entire atom or becomes an ion, and this ion actually has an, a positive charge, and then the electron is just completely separated now, okay? All right, so the first trend that we're going to look at in ionization energy is actually across the period, and ionization energy, or the ability to take off an electron or the amount of energy it takes to remove off an electron increases as you go from left to right or across the period. The first reason for that is because of the valence electrons. In chemistry, the magic number is eight or an octet. And if you get closer to eight electrons, it's going to cost more energy to take those electrons back off. All right. So the closer you are to eight electrons, the more you don't want to let go of them, so it, it takes more energy to take them off. The second reason, which is the, actually the best reason behind all of this, because you can't always rely on the, the number of valence electrons, but you can rely on the number of protons as long as the elements are in the same row that you're comparing. So if, if you add protons to the nucleus, this happens as you go from left to right. And as you're adding protons, what you're doing is you're increasing the amount of positive charge in the nucleus. And when you do that, you're actually attracting the electrons and drawing them in closer to the center of the atom. And so the uh, electrons are actually held more tightly in the presence of more protons, but the number of energy levels remains the same. All right. So now let's look at an example so we can practice. Which of these two atoms has a higher ionization energy? Or which of these two atoms is it harder to remove electrons from? Is it silicon with an atomic number 14 or chlorine with an atomic number of 17? All right. And if I were to choose which one of these had the higher ionization energy, I would actually go with chlorine. All right. These two elements are both found in the same period on the periodic table, which is period three. So I want to make sure I'm comparing the right thing. So why does chlorine have a higher ionization energy than silicon? Well, again, because they're in the same period, it's, I can only look at the increasing number of protons or the increasing atomic number. And because there are more protons in chlorine than there are silicon, chlorine is going to draw in the electrons more tightly. And therefore, that is the reason why it has a higher ionization energy. It's going to be harder to take those electrons back off because they're closer to the nucleus. Let's try another one. Which of the two atoms has a lower ionization energy or which of the two atoms is it easier to remove electrons from? Do we, we have titanium with an atomic number 22 and selenium with an atomic number of 34. All right. So which one would you choose? Well, I would end up choosing titanium having a lower ionization energy 
So again, these two elements are in the same period on the periodic table. The period number is number four. So again, I'm going to ask you why is titanium or does titanium have a lower ionization energy? And being in the same row or in the same period, we still have to look at the number of protons. Titanium has fewer protons, so like the charge in the center of the nucleus is actually lower than that of, of seleniums. Therefore, it's actually going to be easier to take off the electrons. It's not holding on to the electrons very easily or very tightly, excuse me. So it's easy to take them off. It requires less energy to remove electrons from titanium. Okay. So let's move on and talk about the next trend that you can observe in ionization energy. So ionization energy can decrease as you go down the periodic table or down the group. Why? Well, there's this thing called electron shielding. And as you go down the periodic table, you're increasing the number of energy levels, which makes an electron shield. The shield becomes thicker. So if you were to be on the fifth row on the periodic table, then an atom actually has four energy levels that acts as shields. You know, if you're on the third energy level, the atom is on the third energy level, then it has two energy levels that acts as shields. And these shields push or repel electrons away from the atom. Therefore, as you go down the group, you have more electrons that separate the valence electrons from the nucleus. And therefore, it's easier to push it away off onto another atom or, you know, some other substance. All right. So let's put this into practice. Which of the two atoms has a lower ionization energy or which of the two atoms is it easier to remove electrons from? Is it going to be magnesium with atomic number 12 or strontium with atomic number 38? I would definitely choose strontium with an atomic number 38. Now, here's the thing. We're talking about two elements that are actually in the same group. They are in group two on the periodic table, which means the only thing that separates them is actually the number of energy levels. I hope you got that. So what makes strontium different is that it actually has more energy levels. Having more energy levels pushes that va those valence electrons away very easily, so it requires lower energy to get rid of them. Let's try another one. Which of the two atoms has a higher ionization energy, or which of the two atoms, excuse me, atoms is it harder to remove electrons from? Is it going to be oxygen with an atomic number of eight, or selenium with an atomic number of thirty-four? Which one would you choose? I would choose oxygen with an atomic number of eight. And so why would I even bother to choose oxygen over selenium? Well, oxygen and selenium are both in the same group, same group, same column. So the thing that separates them is which period they are in on the periodic table. So oxygen is in period two, selenium is in period four, and as a result, Oxygen has less energy levels, less electrons that separate the valence electrons. So the valence electrons are close to the nucleus, whereas in selenium, the valence electrons are further away. So it is harder to take electrons that are closer to the nucleus, which qualifies oxygen. All right. So oxygen, because it has less electron shielding. All right. So here's the recap on ionization energy. So the dark regions represent the regions of high ionization energy, while the light regions represent regions or elements that have low ionization energies. The ionization energy increases from left to right, and it decreases from top to bottom. All right. And you can see that the, the elements with the highest ionization energy are on the top right, and then the elements with the lowest ionization energy are on the bottom left. Okay. So the white regions represent elements that have unmeasured ionization energies. They're radioactive. They don't last long enough to take valuable measurements from. The, the measurements may exist, all right? But, you know, we really don't care about those right now.
Okay. So again, this is You'll Be Blessed Education. I'm so glad that you were able to join me in this lesson. I hope you were blessed by it. Leave a comment in the section below. Um, also, you know, like and subscribe to my channel, You'll Be Blessed Education. This is You'll Be Blessed. Have a great day. I'm out.